Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we got my own 2002 Suzuki XL7 four wheel drive up on jack stands. Why? Well, because on the highway in fifth gear it's developing this annoying vibration. It's been getting worse and worse over the last, oh, I don't know, 20, 30,000 miles, very slowly progressing after the trip to Florida, after all that highway you know driving at 70 to 80 miles an hour it's it's getting there where I'm like yeah I don't want to push it and really blow something up I'd rather catch it early and you know if it's just like a bearing or or something to replace it and you know keep driving it so what I suspect is just judging by the symptoms it's only under load in fifth gear over like 45 miles an hour. If you're in fourth gear and you, you can go to 60 miles an hour, you basically don't feel this. You put in fifth, it's, it's like a drone, you know, just a classic. You would think it's a drive shaft out of balance, but I tried a junkyard drive shaft. I, you know, I have two spare ones, and that did not change it whatsoever. All the joints are tight. The, you know, the U joints, the CV joints on the rear drive shaft, they're fine. The other thing I noticed, I tried putting in four-wheel drive, high speed, and the vibration got worse. So, note that. I put it in four low, and, you know, that cuts all the gears in half in terms of the ratios, and still only in fifth, right around 2,000 RPM on the engine, so it would be at 45 to 50 in high range. Now it's down to, like, 25 to 30 in low range, you still have the same vibration. So if we look at the schematics here, the breakdown of the transmission and the transfer case, I believe the problem is going to be somewhere right in between the transmission and the transfer case. The other clue here is just this year I noticed that it's it's starting to kind of spit out a little bit of Transmission oil, you can see it's getting wet right there. It's starting to cover the drive shaft. It's starting to drip, not just seep. And it's coming from in between the transmission and the transfer case. There's a little weep hole right in there. And it's kind of coming out and starting to cover stuff. So, again, let's look at the exploded diagram here so it's either the rear of the transmission or the front of the transfer case now it's pretty neat how the transmissions are you know laid out it's, it's a classic five speed rear wheel drive transmission with input shaft output shaft and a counter shaft so here's the the gears and everything here it takes a little while to understand what's what however why does it only do it in fifth gear well fifth gear is the only gear that's behind this support bearing so there's two support bearings there's the first one this is the whole shaft and there's the rear one front and rear and that sits in the case right here you see there is a, a bearing support there and right there so fifth gear is actually outside of that behind this plate it's in the rear case so why is that important well because if you put the load behind the bearings now the shaft isn't loaded between the bearings it's actually loaded on the outside so you have this uneven kind of torque pushing the gears apart and the vibration only happens when you're in fifth. Now what supports the end of the output shaft which is you know this is the output main shaft and there's your basically the splines that stick out past everything past fifth gear into the transfer case. Now the transfer case is you know two speed transfer case. There's the input and there's a bearing on the input 
input gear, then you select low range or high range. This is the counter shaft. So if you're in high range, the power just goes straight through this shaft, and depending if you're on four high or two high, you can hook up your front drive shaft. So I'm suspecting since we have oil leakage somewhere either through this oil seal or through the rear case through this oil seal in the transmission, you know, this shaft, when you're in fifth gear, it has to be supported by the transfer case. And if this bearing right here is going out, is getting loose, then the end of the shaft will wobble and it's just going to create a vibration. Again, you don't really have, it's not a common problem for your bearings to fail in your transfer case or your transmission. And, you know, lubricant's good. But we'll drain it out, see if there's any debris in here. So I'm, I'm suspecting the transfer case. Transmission shifts perfect. Um, and we have to split. We have to take the transfer case off and do a visual inspection. Feel the play in this input shaft of the transfer case and the output shaft coming out of the transmission. See where the oil's coming from. And if it's a bad bearing, it's, it's not a big deal to replace at least this one. You can pop off the front transfer case plate and it's just you know pressed in there onto the shaft so let's do a little diagnosis let's drain the fluid split the cases see what's going on so as you can see I have plenty of gear lube in here if you take the fill plug out a little bit will pour out it's actually quite a bit Let's take the drain plug out. So developing a problem like this, the vehicle has 177,000 miles on it. It's, I think it's premature. I'm a little disappointed. Quite a bit of oil in there. And it still looks pretty clear. I'm not seeing metal shavings or particles in the fluid. You can see the magnetic plug. There's there's just a normal little bit of sludge on there. Nothing nothing crazy. Pop that back in. Take off our drive shafts and pop this guy off and see what's going on. I'm a little jealous of maybe I should get like a Jeep XJ, like uh, Matt's off road recovery. I cannot believe the abuse that thing takes and it still runs like new. That is really a testament to how well those things used to be built especially the drivetrain like original transfer case original transmission 215,000 miles of abuse <laughs> so XL7 eh a little disappointed at the moment alright here's the transfer case so this is definitely where the leak was coming from you can see this oil seal is the one that's wet and it's collecting here, pooling and coming out through that weep hole. Now, is there excessive bearing play in this shaft or not? I mean, there's just a slight bit of movement, but that's probably normal for, for a roller bearing. Everything seems pretty tight. So 
So I don't know. where that rumble's coming from. Let's dive under the car. Look at the transmission. Here's the output shaft of the transmission. This is bone dry, so this oil seal is still fine. This shaft doesn't have any excessive movement either. I'll put it in fifth gear. It's locked in but you can even look inside and see the fifth gear kind of so I don't know what to what to think here <laughs> At least if there's no excessive play, I can keep driving it, but it's just an annoying problem. So I'm using the NTS 500 endoscope to do a visual inspection of fifth gear. What are those little cutouts in the middle of each tooth? Are they supposed to be there? You see those little cutouts? They're very consistent, almost like they were machined in there. I don't think the gears look worn. That's pretty cool, huh? We can switch the camera to forward facing. So we're just going past the oil seal. There's the shaft. And there is our fifth gear sprocket. And then the counter shaft is right here and it has the shift hub on it you see the synchronizer that's the brass piece yeah, I don't see too much slop or play in the shaft I don't see any obvious problems. So I drained out about four and a half quarts of fluid out of the transfer case and the transmission. Same fluid type and it's clean. There's no chunks, metal chunks or metal debris or anything. And I was running Redline MT90 lubricant before and that's what I'm going to put it in again. It's a good time to Replace it anyway, so where is the vibration coming from? Alright, the transfer case is off again. Off of the XL7, I got some parts. A bearing and an oil seal. And why do I suspect this bearing is going bad? It's called the input gear bearing. It supports this shaft. There is slight side to side play very I find it you know surprising that it would cause so much vibration and this oil seal has been leaking pretty badly covering the underside of the vehicle with oil so it's telling me hey you gotta fix me right now <laughs> so hopefully it's an SKF 6208J because the OEM bearings from Suzuki are very hard to find and there's no play in this bearing at all. And then obviously an oil seal also crossed over to an SKF part. There we go. So this bearing is should be pretty straightforward to replace. You have to remove, split the 
transfer case right here, take this front piece off, and it comes off with the bearing and this input shaft. So let's get to it. So all we gotta do is remove six bolts around the perimeter. There's one behind here. Coming out. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. There we are. There's the inside of a transfer case. So basically, do we see any wear on anything at all. This is the input gear and in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive high we don't need the reduction of the counter gears. This um, clutch latches the two you know this is the actual clutch hub so this is directly connected to that shaft which is our main output shaft directly coupled. So I'm going to do a complete inspection here and then we'll try to get this guy out, see how that goes. Well I think we're replacing the right part. I think this shaft is definitely wobbly. If you spin it, it has kind of a rough, rough sound so that bearing just about had it. You know, it doesn't sound terrible. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Plus the oil seal is leaking, so... It has to be the cause of our problem. So let's, uh... Let's replace it. So All Data has fantastic information on the teardown and disassembly of this transfer case. Step 26 is removing this input gear from the case. There's a circlip right down in here. And we'll use our Lyle circlip pliers with the correct inserts. Nice. The right tools make all the difference. And now, next step is beat it out with a hammer. <laughs> Plastic hammer, drive input gear out of the front case. Okay. So in this case, we're leaving the counter shaft in place because it didn't want to come out of the case and it's better to leave it in there. There's an o-ring. You know this little plate, it's all kind of rusty and I didn't want to disturb that. 
but all we do is beat it out this way, I guess. Bingo. That's our prize. Yeah, that bearing feels rough and loose. There's even a kind of a pit. Now, years ago, I heard this kind of howling sound, and that went away, and then this vibration started. So this bearing's been going bad for tens of thousands of miles. Finally, time to replace it. All right, got the proper inserts in here, and the cool thing about these pliers is you can just flip the handles over and then they reverse. There we go. So now we can spread the ring. Perfect. There's that circlip. And now, the instructions say move that guy and use a bearing holder to press this bearing off. You basically have to hook under the bearing. And press the shaft down that way. So using the Pittsburgh bearing puller bearing separator set, the only thing we need is the big bearing holder. Here it is. It's just screwed together to hold the bearing up while we push the shaft down. Up here I just have a cup from the ball joint press just so we don't harm the shaft itself. And Make sure everything's centered before going too far here. And make sure the gear will clear your press. You don't want to <laughs> chip any gear teeth here. Maybe a little bit sideways. Looks pretty good. Let's give it a shot. Okay, it's coming out very nicely. And you want to make sure to catch the gear as it comes out. Sweet. So by feel here, this bearing doesn't feel all that bad, except for sometimes it kind of binds up. <laughs> That's crazy. Definitely some looseness in there. See how the inner race and the outer race are going back and forth? I really hope this is the whole problem. Alright, we got the new bearing set up, ready to press in. Let's see how it goes.
Nice and easy. It's all the way in. I don't know if it feels any different. <laughs> hmm. So let's pop a fresh oil seal in here. So I just have a adapter that kind of, I just want to push this one out. There we go. No issues there. And let's pop the new one in. All right, again using just a flat wheel bearing adapter in this cup. Let's drive the new seal into place. Crooked. That's why I got two. <laughs> Perfect. It's in. All right. So now the shaft and the bearing. Make sure there's some oil on the shaft for the new seal. Might as well put some in the bearing itself. Okay, very nice. Before we get too far, we almost forgot our circlip. Put this guy in here. Perfect. All right, so just pushing on the outer race of the bearing. It's going in quite nicely. And so the bearing is in, the shaft is in place. And man, it feels 100% different. There's actually a little drag on it. It feels super smooth. There's a little a little bit of play but it doesn't feel rough at all like the old one did so I'm hoping this will solve all our vibration problems and we'll see so final reassembly here just slid on the counter gear and put some great RTV around the perimeter. Now we just have to mate up these two pieces without losing any parts. Boom. I think we're good to go. Well, the one promising thing is now with everything assembled, there's no free play in this input shaft. It is much tighter than it used to be. So, and 
really hoping that solves the entire problem. By the way, a quick tip for lifting up and installing the transfer case to line it with the transmission. It's already on there, but ratchet straps are great for controlled lifting. So we've got two attachment points, and they're attached to the door jams here. And basically lift it up and use a second floor jack, position it, align it, slide it in. It's all nuts and bolts from here. Uh, next shot will be the test drive. All right, moment of truth. We got some MT90 in the transfer case. Everything's hooked up. Drive shafts are in place. Let's uh, let's see what happens. So we'll start in two-wheel drive. I don't feel any vibration. Not yet, at least. Let's try four high. Back two wheel drive. I think it should be in pretty good shape, but real test is under load on the road. Well, the vibes are 90% gone. So the strongest ones were in fifth gear, starting at around 45 miles an hour under load. smooth all the way. I'm happy with that. So a little bonus footage on the XL7 drive shaft vibration problem or drive line vibration. So the new bearing in the transfer case, it's in, it works great. There's no more hard vibration in fifth gear, you know, under load. However, still left over, there's like a roughness. You know, it all speeds, you can kind of like wah, wah, you know. Feels like a drive shaft that's slightly out of balance. Indeed, the main drive shaft that goes to the rear wheels, uh you can put it in gear and get underneath and at the center bearing right under here you could see it vibrating so this guy there's a center support bearing and here you can see that I've taken this joint apart before I had to tighten the nut it's non-serviceable but you know we got around it it's RTV'd and I welded the cup back on 
So this is now slightly out of balance. What we're going to do now is use the hose clamp method. So this is going to be our balance weight and the Pico NVH kit. There's an accelerometer, it's a magnet, stuck to the side of the support bearing and the wire goes to the actual box NVH interface 3 channel and that goes to our picoscope. So what I want here to see here this is the actual uh, raw data down here and then we see the frequencies up here. See there's time domain and frequency domain so that's that's raw data if you want to see frequency so we'll see peaks at whatever frequency the drive shaft's vibrating. We're worried about the first order imbalance of the drive shaft. Uh, this is actually exactly what I did at my last job that I worked for for two years. Um, we did analysis on vibrations for different industrial equipment, motors, pumps, uh, you name it, you know, bearings. So in this case, this is a simple, um, you know, a simple measurement. We're just looking for the first order imbalance, 1x. So we'll see the peak at the actual frequency of rotation. So let's, uh, let's fire up the truck, put it in gear, and in fourth gear, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going from RPM to Hertz and let's say we're at you know 1500 RPM divided by 60 we should expect to peak at around 25 Hertz however just by feel we want to maximize the vibration to get into resonance the, the drive shaft itself depending on the speed <clears throat> it'll actually uh, constructively you know amplify the vibration when it gets into resonance. It's, it's a function of the weight of the shaft, the construction. So in order to uh, balance the shaft we want to find that resonance point when we can really feel it and to do our all of our checks there. Move the balance weight around and try to minimize that first order. So let's fire up the truck and get to work. So first thing you want to do is mark your shaft. Now since the U-joint has four sides. I just marked it one, two, three, four. And judging by that, there's number one right here, two, three, and four. So without the hose clamp in place, this is, you know, as is. Let's spin the shaft, see what the amplitude is, put the hose clamp on here, and rotate it to the different positions, one, two, three, and four. And hopefully, find a position where we'll find the heavy spot of the shaft and opposite it should be the light spot and then we can use either just one clamp see if that's enough balance weight or use two clamps that are opposing each other let's say we want the weight to be here and two is too much and one's not enough we can always kinda of do this spread the two weights apart so the light spot is in between and we can go all the way from zero to two hose clamps you know this would be zero if they're opposite each other and two if they're together and right there would be one or you can just use one clamp based on the data alright here we go fire it up and put it in fourth gear and go for it So there you go, you see the 1x peak getting higher and higher, so let's find the resonance. See if we go faster it actually drops. It's 
So I'm gonna set it to about 23 miles per hour. And we're almost maxing out the amplitude there, 40 mg, so it's measuring in Gs. mark it on our notebook no clamp was about 40 so then I put the hose clamp on one two three and four and this was really bad that one was really bad two and three were okay but 2.5 gave me the lowest reading at about 13 so let's put the clamp at 2.5 and that should be good so I install the hose clamp at position 2.5 Put it in gear and get up to speed and just see to the pants the vibration is basically gone but let's go by our data we're on 13 mg on the first order much lower than 40. let's speed it up That first order is almost gone. I'd say that's, for me, that's acceptable. So we'll leave it at that. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.